Hello, and welcome to the Red Chair Series. I'm Lisa Ishii, Senior Vice President Operations for the Johns Hopkins Health System, and I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Monica Mukherjee, ischemic heart disease expert. Welcome to the Red Chair Series. You are a world-renowned expert in ischemic heart disease. So help us understand how does ischemic heart disease differ from heart failure or from cardiac arrest? So ischemic heart disease generally refers to having decreased blood flow from the heart arteries to the heart tissue. And there's a whole spectrum of ischemic heart conditions that can occur. It can either involve the main arteries that are feeding the heart, known as the coronary arteries, which are the larger kind of artery systems that typically cause major heart attacks. But there is also all sorts of branches that come off of those larger arteries, which is known as the microcirculation. So they're the smaller blood vessels that are still important. And what we're finding is that ischemic heart disease is often now, especially in women, affecting those smaller branch arteries. So are there different types of ischemic heart disease? Yes, there are. So there are the acute coronary syndromes, which could involve a heart attack where there is a blockage to one of the main arteries causing you know, somewhat typical symptoms of acute chest pain, changes in your electrocardiogram, which is the electrical tracing of the heart. Um, But then there are also times where you can have chest pain and we do a workup and we don't find a major obstruction in one of those larger arteries. And that's a whole new syndrome that we're beginning to recognize that um, comprises of uh, three main subtypes. Are those subtypes Minoka, Anoka, and Inoka? Yes. Tell us they more. They are. Okay. Minoka is a myocardial infarction with no obstructive coronary disease. Okay. Inoka is ischemia without coronary artery disease. And Anoka is angina or chest pain without obstructive coronary disease. Okay. And what that means is that patients are presenting with kind of what's known as typical symptoms of having chest pain or shortness of breath. And they come in and their electrocardiogram, which is an electrical tracing of the heart, shows that there's some evidence of heart damage. Or they're having a blood test that shows that there's some evidence that there has been damage to the heart. But then when we do our diagnostic testing, which is usually what's known as a coronary angiogram, And that's when we inject dye into the main heart arteries and we're looking for blockages. We actually can't find any. Oh, interesting. And so that usually suggests that these symptoms, which are still a heart attack, it's still evidence that there was damage to the heart, are maybe not being caused by a main blockage in one of the major heart arteries, but that the smaller branch arteries are affected. Dr. Mukherjee, do the subtypes of ischemic heart disease present differentially in men and women? Yeah, so there's actually studies that have shown that these newer syndromes that I'm describing of Minoka, Inoka, and Anoka disproportionately affect women. Mm -hmm. Um, About 65% are actually occurring in women. Um, And there's different reasons for that. There are anatomical differences in the coronary artery structure. So women have um, kind of different layout of their coronary arteries. Um, But in addition, women tend to have autoimmune rheumatic diseases more commonly than men as well, like systemic lupus, um, scleroderma. Mm. Some of these syndromes happen more commonly in women. And then they also commonly cause differences in the microcirculation of the heart. So when those two things go hand in hand, we're actually seeing that a lot of these autoimmune diseases predispose women to having Minoka, Inoka, and Anoka. Dr. Mukherjee, I think I heard that the American Heart Association guidelines made a new recommendation as it relates to chest pain in women. Is that correct? Yes. Syndromes like this should not be called atypical chest pain because especially in women, it really diminishes the importance of the symptoms that a patient might be having. And we want to move away from that. We want to acknowledge that 
all symptoms, no matter what, may suggest something that's going on that needs attention. And we don't want um, anyone to feel that their symptoms are not large enough to demand attention. Dr. Mukherjee, the impact that your work is having on both women and all patients is extraordinary. Thank you for all that you do for our patients, for the American Heart Association, and for Johns Hopkins. It really was a pleasure. And thank you for being here for the Red Chair Series.